Welcome to the Plant Centered and Thriving Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Kitchens. Welcome back to the show. My name's Ashley. I'm Katie. And today, this is the first part. So this is part one of a three-part series centered around what I would like to say is an empowering message that is anti-diet culture, especially now when summer is ahead of us. And there's a lot of messaging out there that can feel really icky. Like, oh, you have to look a certain way to wear a bikini or get your summer body, or you need to start lifting weights now to get your six pack up. All this SHIT that we are basically (laughs) going to talk about the opposite of because everybody is a beautiful body. And this is something that we talk a lot about at Plant Center Nutrition but more with one-on-one with our clients versus maybe like on a podcast or on social media, we definitely sprinkle it in here and there, but we want to really dedicate the next three episodes to talking about this messaging that is very, very important at the core of plant-centered nutrition and what Katie and I do with our clients and what we've done, the work that we've done also on ourselves. And I think those messages, I think it's important to recognize that those messages feel so temporary. They feel like, you know, six weeks to lose 10 pounds or whatever. The messages that we want to send are all year round about how you feel, getting in touch with your own body, tuning out the noise. And it's not temporary. It's a, it's a, a lifestyle change and something that, you know, we feel really passionate about and because we care about you and not just because we're trying to get this kind of temporary result to try Mm. to starve yourselves or turn your worlds upside down between now and, you know, your beach vacation. We want to kind of establish permanent habit changes that's going to last you a lifetime. Yes. Yes. Cause we want to provide a safe space for you to listen to this type of messaging and to walk away feeling like empowered and excited. And again, like Katie said, we talk about lifelong changes, not short-term temporary changes or quick fixes. And so that's definitely what we're going to highlight today and in the next three episodes, but today specifically, what we're going to talk about is really unpacking weight loss and plant-based eating, because what we both see, especially in the plant-based world is there can be a lot of messaging also tied to weight loss when it comes to being plant-based is weight loss guaranteed on a plant-based diet. Should you lose weight? Shouldn't you be losing weight on a plant-based diet? Katie, when I was doing research for this episode in general, I just, I wanted to kind of see what was out there in Googling, like why weight loss is not a guarantee on a plant-based diet. But what ended up coming up in my search was all the reasons why you're not losing weight on a plant-based diet, that that should be the goal or something. And that's kind of the opposite of what we preached when it comes to plant-based eating, because we don't tie our messaging to weight loss really at all. So what we're going to talk about today is that weight is not an indicator of health. And one thing Katie and I talked about is how important language is. And Katie, you had made a couple of really good points on, you know, even in our practice, how we try to to avoid using words like diet or good or bad, which we're going to talk about in the next, uh, in episode number three, and even healthy or unhealthy, because health is tied really to the person and what they truly believe is healthy for them or what they believe is a, is a healthful life. That definition looks different for everybody. And we're also going to talk about that a little bit more today. Yeah. And so if you guys are, you know, deciding, okay, I want to start to make changes and you're trying to decide, you know, which path you want to take, it's important that the resources that you choose are, you know, ones that again, care about you. And so these temporary fixes, these quick fixes, they kind of concentrate on these buzzwords, uh, you know, health and wellness and weight loss and diet and things like that, because it works, it's marketing. It's, you know, because it's uh, something to kind of attract your attention, but you want to understand that health has so many different facets and it's almost irresponsible to kind of equate weight loss and health or plant-based eating equals weight loss or diet is good, you know, all, all types of these kind of, uh, kind of generalizations, you want to make sure that when you're kind of making these decisions that you're doing it, you know, just like we always talk about, you're making decisions mindfully and that, you know, your resources and they're 
coming from a trustworthy place and from a place where they have your best interests at heart. And it's not just about kind of profits and bottom lines. Yes. Yes. Cause plant-based eating, it's not a fad diet. And in our opinion, it shouldn't be abused as one either. It shouldn't right. plant-based eating. And again, this is our opinion. Shouldn't be used to sell weight loss. Right. Um, okay. Katie, have you heard, you know, that audio that's like, run, I'm going to play it for you really quickly. Okay. okay. <laughs> run. <laughs> Love that one. <laughs> that's what I think of every time when I see like a headline that says, oh, you know, lose weight in 10 days by going plant-based or whatever that is. So I always think of that audio. Anyone Love that it. promotes such a thing, get the heck out of there. <laughs> yeah. A <laughs> red flag, waving that red flag. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can admit when I first started my transition, I've been vegetarian for many years, but I wanted to transition to kind of a vegan lifestyle specifically. Uh, you know, I, I was always kind of pulled that direction, but kind of what tipped me over was I had gained a lot of weight and wanted to lose it. And so I reached out to Ashley and that was my first goal. And she was like, no, no, no. <laughs> my first goal was like, yeah, I really need to lose weight. And, you know, that got us down the rabbit hole of how many other things were out of whack in my life and weight loss got put on the back burner. And I always say, you know, if that is, you know, if you feel better, if you know, you've been kind of one weight and you feel better, uh, at a, you know, at that weight and you know that you're not where you are now, I think that's okay. But I always say that weight loss is a wonderful byproduct of plant-based eating, but uh, all the other wonderful things that, you know, I benefited from more confidence. I slept better. I felt better. We always talk about digestion issues, resolve themselves. And all of those were so much better than weight loss. So even though in your mind, you're like, oh, that maybe that's the secret sauce. Maybe that's going to be what gets me to that magical number, this like arbitrary number that's going to equal happiness, <laughs> you know, uh, that we kind of fall into the trap of when it's really about how you feel and all of these other things that have to do and influence our health and our wellness. It's not just the number on the scale. There's so many more indicators than that. Katie, what you said too, like the way that we eat is so much more complicated and so much more complex. And also too, the way that we feel is so much more complicated and, and way more complex. Like something that makes you feel good might not make me feel good or something that makes me, me feel good or brings me joy might not make you feel good. Like I love upper, upper body day at the gym. And you're like, oh, I don't want to like go and lift weights at the gym. Like I would rather like do pole dancing, which we're going to do <laughs> or something like that. So you're telling our secrets. Yeah. I saw your, I saw your story yesterday where you were working those traps. Everyone loves your traps. <laughs> so that actually does inspire me to go and, and do shoulder workouts, but, uh, but yeah, the, that, that comparison syndrome can be dangerous. Yeah, it, it definitely can. And I think there's just so much, there's so much nuance when it comes to, again, like what makes you happy? What makes me happy? What makes, what is your definition of health and healthy? And what my definition of health and healthy is it's different for everybody. And Katie, I remember you coming to me many, several years ago now, and weight loss was your number one goal. It was like, you know, all these things are out of whack, but I've just got to lose weight and all these things will be fixed. And it's like, no, 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 no. We got to fix all these other things. And exactly. then if weight loss is a side effect, <laughs> then it is, but that's not something we're going to focus on. And you talking about that reminded me of another client who also came to me wanting to lose weight. And to this day, we worked together for over a year. She was an, a wonderful client and she's a big like jokester. She's very sarcastic. And to this day, she still says, Ashley, you tricked me into <laughs> thinking that we, I was going to lose weight while working with you. And now you've had me throw away my scale and eat intuitively and do all these things that I never thought that I would do, but I'm finding so much more fulfillment this way than I did this other path that I, I thought I was taking. Absolutely. And, you know, it's that diet culture that we have just been spoon fed. I mean, since we were, you know, and I can just speak for the women, since we were little girls, like, instead of you're strong and you're confident, it's like, oh, you're cute and you're pretty. And, you know, our appearance is so wrapped up in our self-worth and what we find to be important or what we kind of prioritize. And 
it's that diet culture they like to capitalize on that is like weight loss should be you know how big your waist is or how big your you know your butt is like that should be what you're worried about not how you speak to yourself not are you getting uh, enough sleep at night are you looking in the mirror and saying nice things to yourself it's like so many other things should be our priority instead of you know that certain number on a scale it's just it's so infuriating and so <laughs> So I feel like I was put on this earth to make sure that, people, that other people don't suffer. I mean, because it is, it's just, it's, you suffer and it really takes over so many parts of your life when you're talking about how you look and how you move through the world. We both wanted to highlight too, because we work with such a, a, a varied population in our one-on-one -on -one client work. When you go plant-based, so this is for like the person transitioning to plant-based, when you go plant-based and you don't experience weight loss, that is okay. That is completely okay. Heck, it's okay if you gain some weight. Like, I think that's the thing too, is because, oh, because uh, specifically because you're plant-based, you should look a certain way. I remember walking into a conference, a plant-based conference one time, and I heard someone say, kind of like looking around, like, oh, I thought everyone would be thin. I thought everyone would sort of like look a certain way. And I, when I heard that it was like, no, like just because you're plant-based doesn't, again, there's no one size fits all when it comes to plant-based eating. Cause I think that speaks to the industry. And I think that speaks to kind of opinions and that everybody's got one. It speaks to how ingrained diet culture is in our brains and how it is so hard to get away from it. It is so hard. And that's why the clients that we work with, the ones who are especially successful are, they work with us for a lot, like a year, sometimes two, three years, because this stuff is not easy to just flip a switch and get through. Like intuitive eating, detaching, untangling yourself from diet culture takes years of work, especially if it has been, if you've been brought up into it very heavily, maybe you've seen it in like a loved one that raised you, or maybe some of your best friends growing up, it's really ingrained in them. Like whatever the case may be, because everyone experiences it differently. It takes a while to unravel yourself from it. And you have to constantly put in the work to make sure you don't get tangled back up into it because it's everywhere. Yeah. And I think that's why those change your life in six weeks. Those are so attractive because we're in that phase of humanity where we want that instant gratification. We want that instant fix. We're all busy. We want to, you know, have it done yesterday. We don't want to think about it. We want to think about, you know, more fun stuff. But if you really think about it, if you put in that work, you have the rest of your life to enjoy it rather than riding this yo-yo back and forth, lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, where that sets you up to just feel terrible about yourself and, yeah. get, and get wrapped up in these kind of super superficial priorities. We had one client that uh, I remember very vividly that was on the podcast where she was eight years old and went to the doctor and the doctor told her mother right in front of her, you know, your kid is fat. She needs to not eat as much. That stayed with her for years, decades. Uh, and of course, the, I mean, you know, words affect you and uh, these habits can really get ingrained in our psyches and can last years. So it's, it's going to take longer than a week to fix, right? Yes. Let's say you have a leaky shower and it just drips, 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 right? It's that little drip, you know, if you fix it right away, it may not take as long, but if it drips for years, you got to rip the whole foundation out mm. and, start, and start from scratch. So Katie, I remember too, especially, you know, working with you in particular and your story and your journey and speak, like thinking about diet culture a lot of these things that we tell ourselves, these stories, we have to, ch we have to challenge the heck out of them. It's like, wait, who said that? Where did that come from? Because I think so often we just go through the motions and we're telling ourselves these stories over and over and over again. You know, like the client that you just mentioned, who was a doctor said right in front of her when she was an eight-year-old that she was fat. She played that over and over in her head for like 30 years. 
And I think that's part of the journey as well is challenging the heck out of these stories and where they come from and why you're saying them to yourself over and over and over again. I know that's something that you worked on, something that I worked on, it's something our clients work on is challenging the heck out of these phrases or these things that we're telling ourselves day in and day out. Like I need to be a certain size or I need to look a certain way or whatever it is. Absolutely. And I think if you're struggling with that or you're struggling to change that, I mean, there's lots of things that, that you can do therapy, working with a professional, uh, affirmations, things like that. But again, to stress that those are the things that are going to make lifelong changes. And those are the things that are going to help you feel better and help you achieve your goals rather than just focusing on this kind of superficial goal of weight loss equals happiness. I remember reading this from the intuitive eating is either the book or the workbook. And it basically talked about that weight loss or even weight in general distracts you from, from what is truly important in life. Yeah. Like from things that are truly important. I was just having this conversation with a client this morning. I asked her, I was like, when's the last time you woke up and said, I want to do something that brings me joy today. And she was like, uh, I don't know if I've ever done that. And so it's, <laughs> it's things like that, that it's like, we, you know, what, whatever it is, there are so many distractions from like, what is truly important in life and weight, weight loss, the pursuit of weight loss can be one of those things. And again, if your goal is to lose weight, that that's fine, but, but, you know, there's going to be a, but <laughs> your health, your relationship with food, your relationship with yourself matters so much more than a number on a scale or a tag size in your jeans. So much more. Yeah. And I think it can be really hard to, especially when you're, you're, you're in it, you, you, you're really struggling with uh, weight, weight loss, that messaging diet culture, it can be hard to get out of it. And if you're not ready to work with someone one-on-one -on -one yet, I would challenge you if you still correlate health and weight loss, weight loss and health kind of in the same, you put them in the same category. There's a book out there called body respect that I would challenge you to read. We'll put that in the show notes. You know, if you're not ready to work with someone, but you kind of want to do some more digging on what we're, what we're talking about here, that can be a great book just to dig a little bit deeper into, into this messaging, especially if it's, if it's kind of new, because it's being talked about more and more, which is phenomenal, but it can be talked about a lot more. And I think like we can get lulled into this kind of false sense of like things like have changed. And a lot of them have, like, I, I love that there's a lot more celebrities involved in kind of, you know, body positivity and trying to like spread that message. And that's much more normalized. Um, but you know, it's still very, especially with social media, it's very kind of image focused. And so uh, it's so easy, again, to that kind of suffer from that comparison syndrome, like, oh, if I look like them, then that's going to solve, you know, all my problems. At Plant Center Nutrition, instead of focusing on weight loss, we don't even ask about it on your intake form. Our primary goal is to really, you know, make sure, yes, you're eating plant-based in a way that feels aligned if that's what you wanted to do, but also to very, very importantly is heal your relationship with food. If that's something that you're struggling with and focus on these things that do bring you joy, that do add value in your life, you know, like gentle movement that makes you feel good and excited. That looks different for Katie and I, and that looks different for everybody, you know, good quality sleep, stress management, paying attention to these other factors that are so important and bring value and joy into your life. Um, and this might even include medical issues or health history. Yes. But how can we make sure that you have a bad, a relationship with food and yourself, and you're eating in a way that feels really, really aligned. When you look at somebody, you can't automatically say, oh, that person's healthy and that person's not. That's the thing. And that's the thing that that book goes into that I talked about body respect. And that's also what we're trying to say here is weight is not an indication of health. And there are so many other factors that are involved, like access, you know, access to food, to healthcare, to care in general, stress, finances, there are you just, you never know what is going on in somebody's life. You cannot look at somebody and say, oh, again, this person is healthy or this person is not. And I think that's also the messaging that we're trying to get across here as well. 
that's why I love intuitive eating so much is because you learn to kind of tune out the noise and not compare yourself to your neighbor. Like I don't even compare myself to Ashley because we're two different people, even though we eat similarly, because it's such a small part of what health is. And it comes down to what's best for you. And you're the only one who knows what you feel like inside. And you're the only one who knows how you feel after you eat that certain thing, or, you know, how you feel after you drink that certain thing, or how you feel after you've just been to the gym. You're the only one who knows what makes you feel better and what makes you feel not so good. You know, you can't rely on you know, whatever your neighbor does uh, to fix all your stuff. You got to do some internal work and learn how to pay attention to what's going on inside and let that drive your decisions. And that's part of this process as well to unravel yourself from diet culture and this type of messaging is to again, focus back on yourself. That is what is going to help get you through basically this journey and this struggle and this hurdle that is diet culture because it is so deeply ingrained in our society and in, in us as well. And that's part of the process is again, kind of reverting back to your body's intuition because it is strong and maybe it's been suppressed for a little while, but it's time to release the beast basically and let it back <laughs> out because that beast is strong and that's your beautiful beast. So <laughs> Ashley, you're a beautiful beast. <laughs> so are you, Katie. <laughs> and Katie, something something that you had said sparked something in me that I see on social media fairly often, I would say nowadays, that if we all ate and drank and moved the same, that we would still all look very differently. And I think that is such an important message to remember because kind of like what Katie said, Katie and I both eat similarly, but we don't look the same. Our hair color is different. We wear different clothes. We do different things. And I think that that's an important message to remember is that if we were to all eat and move the same way that we would all still look very differently and that is okay. In fact, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. What a boring, what a boring world that would be, wouldn't it? Right. Oh, that'd be so boring. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's great. It, you, it, you know, we all have to learn that. I mean, who wants to be all the same, you know, who wants to be all the same? Uh, yeah. Our differences are worth celebrating and you know, we don't have to all be this kind of cookie cutter. What is normal? That's, you know, that, I mean, that could be a whole podcast in and of itself, but right. put yourself out of that misery where you're just stuck being like, I'm not as good as them, or I'm not good enough um, because I can't do what they do. We've talked about this before is you don't want to compare you know, your beginning to someone else's middle. I mean, Ashley's been lifting weights for years and years and years, and she's got those beautiful traps to, to show for it. So she should show those off. Right. But you know, if I'm just starting uh, working on those, my shoulders aren't going to look like hers overnight. And she'd be really mad if they did because she's she's done a lot of work to get those things. Uh, (laughs) So just make sure that you embrace you know, whenever you start, cause you got to start somewhere and you know, yeah. that starting is the hardest part. And then you get to just enjoy the journey of learning and getting better and feeling better uh, about yourself when you look in the mirror and when you go to work and when you're on vacation, it's all about, I think the, the ultimate goal should be to just feel better. Mm. Yep. I think that's really what it boils down to. I mean, it really does boil down to how you feel. And that is your definition of health. Yes. Kitty, oh, this is just such a, a great message. And we definitely need to be talking about this more everywhere. We all need to. And that's, that's the kind of the goal. Next week, we're going to talk more about, okay, well, Ashley, Katie, you say, well, weight doesn't matter. And maybe I shouldn't use, quote, shouldn't use the scale. Well, then what, what do I do? How do I measure success? Like I I do want to work towards goals. I do want to measure my progress, but how the heck do I do it? So next week, we're going to talk about that ways to measure your progress, your success without, without the scale involved, without a number being involved. Well, there are going to be a few numbers, but we'll talk about that next week. Not the ones (laughs) you're thinking of. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. If this podcast was helpful or beneficial or insightful, please head over to Instagram and let us know. We would love to carry on that conversation if you would like to, um, in the DMS until next time, keep thriving. 